Hi everyone, it's Meredith, your evolutionary astrologer. Welcome back to my Soul Navigation Soulmate series. This is video three. If you haven't seen video one or two, go back and watch those and then come back here and pick it up. So also, I want to tell you that I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for being a, a subscriber and even a member. If you haven't joined my membership yet, um, I hope you'll do so. So let's dive into soulmates. I've talked to you a lot about the nodal access and how important it is in recognizing your soulmates and some of the lessons that soulmates bring to you. I'm gonna continue right now in this series with Sinistry. And I want you to pay attention to not just the nodal access, although that is enormous, that is so huge, that is no small thing, and it is very important, if not the most important thing. But in Magi astrology, which by the way, if you don't know about Magi astrology, it's incredible. Tell me if you're familiar with Magi astrology. I studied it a long, long time ago in my student years, and I just fell in love with the science inside Magi astrology, and I love it. And one of the things I learned about were the golden linkages inside Magi astrology. And then I started looking for them in my practice. And Oh my God, I just got full body chills. They are so true. In addition to everything else I just told you, this is another way to find your soulmate inside the astrological lens, okay? I want you to think about Venus, Neptune, and Chiron. And when those planets interlock in a way between your chart and your love's chart, it creates a golden linkage. For example, if your Venus sits in positive relationship to your partners, Neptune and Chiron and Venus. That's like this triple golden linkage. If you have just a combination of two of those planets in harmony, it's really powerful. That is a golden linkage. So if you're Chiron and they're Neptune or their Chiron and your Neptune are in harmony, that is a soulmate connection. If your Venus and their Neptune are in harmony, or if your Venus and their Chiron are in harmony, or Venus and Neptune, okay, any combination, Venus, Chiron, and Neptune. Now, if your Neptune and Chiron are in harmony together in your own chart, you have a golden linkage inside of yourself, which is really, really blessed and lucky. It means you love yourself. It means there's a blessing there inside of sort of this highest kind of love. So let's say your Neptune and your Chiron are in positive aspect to one another and they are in positive aspect to your partner's Venus. That is the thing I'm talking about where it creates like a triangle. That is a soulmate connection. If your Chiron, Venus, and Neptune, and their Chiron, Venus, and Neptune are all in harmony in one way or another. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter if it's just their Venus, your Chiron, and then your Chiron, their Neptune. It doesn't matter if it creates the whole linkage. It, even if you have one of those, it is a soulmate love connection. It is beautiful and it is healing. And one of the reasons why I think this is, is I believe Neptune is the highest unconditional love planet that there is. It's a higher octave than Venus. And Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron is where you will learn how to heal your own wounds. And it brings this the greatest healing power that you have. It will show you how you do heal your wounds. And if you have Chiron in Pisces, you're going to heal your wounds spiritually. If you have Chiron in the in the first house, you know, you're probably going to be uh, very direct and specific and um, physical inside your healing process. So Chiron shows me where you will be wounded and how and where you will heal. And when you bring that in to the higher octave of love, Neptune, and the planet of love, Venus, 
you get a healed relationship. And I have found the best relationships are the ones uh, in which you can say, I'm sorry, I love you, I nurture your wound, I nurture you back to life, I appreciate you, I see you, I celebrate you, I bring you these roses to make your day more beautiful, right? That is very Neptune Venus. You put Chiron in there, it makes the relationship have a level of vulnerability in it that makes you not even want to hurt the person because they are a soulmate. They are a beautiful, gorgeous soulmate in your life. So I want to know if you have any of these golden linkages in your chart with your partner. Um, and you don't have to do the by wheel if you don't have the software to do it. All you have to do is remember harmonious relationships are conjunctions, trines, and sextiles. So let me show you this combination. So this is for those who can't make a wheel, don't know how to make a wheel, don't know how to read a wheel, okay? I'm going to give you the cheat sheet and I'm going to give you the special soul navigation hack. Okay, so you're going to look at what sign your Neptune is in, your Chiron is in, and also your Venus. Then you're going to look at your partner or your crushes or even even a love in your life. It could be a sibling. It could be a best friend. You know, it doesn't have to be um, a sexual relationship, but this is how you can see if this person's a soulmate in your life. And then you're going to look at their Neptune, Chiron, and Venus, okay? So I've done this before in my Sun Sign series, and I've done this a lot. So hopefully you've binged on a lot of videos before you've gotten here. You know that the element that the sign is in likes the other same elements. So fire likes fire, water likes water, earth likes earth, and air likes air. So all the fire signs love each other, okay? All the air signs love each other, all the water signs love each other, and all the earth signs love each other. Those are harmonious aspects. So we're looking for conjunctions. That means mine is the same as yours. So both of our Neptunes are the same. Both of our uh, Chirons are the same. Both of our Venuses are the same. Or, or one of those three planets sits on one of your three planets in the exact same space. And I give the orb six degrees. I might be generous and give it 10 in this case. With the nodes, I don't do that as much. But with these planets, I might go up to 10. Uh, six and under is really tight. If it's exact, this is super intense, okay? So if one of your three planets, Venus, Neptune, Chiron, sits right smack or within 10 degrees, like it better if it's six, on their Venus, Neptune, or Chiron, that's a conjunction. And that is a golden linkage. And that tells me soul mate. Okay. The next one is as if they're in trine and trine is the same element. So let's say my Chiron is in Leo and your Venus is in Aries and they're within 10 degrees of each other. They're at the same degree. That's a golden linkage. Okay. So any of these three planets with their three planets in, let's just say, fire signs, and they are near the same degree, within 10 degrees, that's a golden linkage. That's what a trine is. Now, a sextile is this. Water likes earth. You already know this from my previous videos, and you know that the earth needs water, right? The earth needs water to grow anything in it. So earth and water are compatible, and that is called a sextile. So if you've got any of those three planets in earth and they have it in water and they're near the same degree within 10 degrees, that is a golden link. So for now, just think about the signs, not so much the degrees. And if you want to order a natal chart from me, then you can start reading the degrees. Each sign has 30 degrees. And the closer that your degrees are, it is more in alignment. So if this is what the whole constellation is, and it goes from zero to 30, if you guys have, you know, six degrees and five degrees, that's like really intense. 
So the degrees matter, but for this conversation, I want you to think about the elements. So if you've got your Venus, Chiron, and Neptune in fire, and they have it in fire, and the degrees are within 10, you've got a golden linkage. If you've got fire and they have air, that's a golden linkage. That's a sextile. Earth and other earth signs, that's a trine, right? So Capricorn, Virgos, and Tauruses, that's a trine. That's very positive. And you know that any of the water signs are in harmonious sextile to earth signs. If you're an air sign, you know that you're gonna like the other air signs, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, they're all gonna like each other. So if you've got that Venus, Chiron, Neptune, you know, in air signs, and they've got those planets in air signs and they make connections together, that is a soulmate connection. And you also now know that air signs are in harmonious sextile position to fire signs. So air likes fire and fire likes air and water likes earth and earth likes water. So you have to look at your golden linkages and there are more marriages that have golden linkages because they bring this higher octave of beauty and grace and forgiveness and love to the table. And so if you've got a Neptune Venus connection, but let's say Chiron isn't in it, it still counts. If you've got a Chiron Venus connection, it still counts. If you've got all of them, oh my God, leave me a comment below and let me know. Do you have golden linkages in your relationships? So these golden linkages are just absolutely mind boggling because they are so accurate. I mean, I've looked at my own relationships and the golden linkages are just shell shocking because they're inside my best relationships and my favorite relationships. So go look and see. They don't always mean that you will be married happily ever after, but what they do bring you is this great grand and soul mate connection that is jam packed filled with the potential and possibility of a soul mate love that you've never had before now if you have all of that but then you get also you know the their son on your south node mm. That sun on the south node is a real deal breaker. That is a very, very, very challenging and difficult, difficult position. So if you get the sun, Mars, or Saturn on the south node, but you have a bunch of golden triangles, there's a chance. But I guarantee you, this relationship will be filled with probably things to apologize for and learning how to say, I'm sorry, and I love you, and I don't want to hurt you. But soulmates come with giant lessons. They come, you know, our soulmate relationships are our hardest relationships sometimes, and oftentimes frequently, because our soulmates agreed before we incarnated to play a major part in our life. So this is what I've come to learn about soulmates. I've come to learn that a soulmate is somebody who, before you incarnated, you had an ascended master, guardian angels, and spirit guides. And these souls don't incarnate with you, but they help you in your life review. Pick the lessons that you want to learn, and um, they help cast your show, if you will. So you're sitting there in your soul pod like a pod of dolphins, and you it is your turn to orchestrate the great lessons in your life. Now, when you descend on earth, I believe there is free will, and free will takes precedence over destiny. Destiny is what you planned for, uh, what you signed up for, and how it was going to look. And then free will is what actually transpired based on your mortal decisions on earth that your body actually um, manifested, where you were standing and at what time. You know, a, a human, a person, a soul who decides to uh, get a body, if you will, and descend on earth, um, basically 
uh, signed up for a body. And what you do with that body is based on your free will choice. The planets are not controlling you. I do believe the planets are set in a certain way that create the blueprint of your soul at birth. And if you can learn how to read it, you can kind of crack the code on who you were born to be and um, what you came here to learn. And it's your soul's contract that you created. You picked your birth time. It only looks like your mom did, you know, if you got a C-section or your doctor did. You actually picked it. So let me just go back to this idea that I have. And I learned this from Dr. Michael Newton. I love giving my mentors credit because they've really shaped my, my mind and my thinking and I've done a lot of research. And Dr. Michael Newton is a giant love of mine. And if you don't know him, go uh, listen to the interview I did with him on my radio station back in 2006. And uh, I was pregnant at the time. You just click on the listen tab on my website, soulnavigation.com, scroll down, find Dr. Michael Newton. And he discovered uh, where the soul lives in between lifetimes. I'm a huge fan of his and he's passed away since, but um, just love him so much. I love him. I know he's here with us. So what I learned from him is prior to descending on earth in your body, you work with your ascended master and you pick out your lessons. And so let's say I pick out the lesson of forgiveness. Your ascended master will ask somebody from your soul pod, this soul, her name will be Meredith, wants to learn the lesson of forgiveness. So who here in her soul pod is willing to commit a crime against her? Something that needs to be forgiven because I can't learn forgiveness if I have nothing to forgive, right? Maybe my father raises his hand and says, I'm going to disown her at birth and I'm never going to want to have anything to do with her. The Ascended Master looks at me and says, is that a lesson you'd want to learn? And I'm like, mm, I don't really want to learn that one, but oh God. So he says, well, this is going to teach you the power of forgiveness. And this is going to teach you to develop your own self-worth, not through your father, but through your own self. So here I come down and I descend onto earth. I am born and uh, to a father that never wants to meet me. Now he's just fulfilling a destiny that we agreed upon, but I don't consciously remember that. So it hurts like, right? He's a soulmate. Now, if I go back to our charts and do our sinistry, I can see, are there golden linkages there? And what if there are? So, you know, that's not love. That didn't feel like love. Or was it? Or was it? Was it a Neptunian kind of love? Like, yeah, but look at how you grew from that wound. Look at how you manifested such a beautiful self-reliance and in a, a beautiful self-love. Look at how you didn't let that destroy you. Look at how that made you rise up. Look at how that made you heal. So it's interesting to look at these linkages also with people who have wounded you in order to step into the power of forgiveness that those linkages will ultimately create or want to create or intend to create. So when I'm talking about soulmates, I'm not just talking about love mates, but I am also talking about that. So people who hurt you are oftentimes some of the most important soulmates in your life. And if you have golden linkages with them, they are destined to grow you. And the story shouldn't stop with just the wound they created in you. The story's not over. There's still something for your betterment to still come. Most of my practice is spent on talking about soulmates and soulmate love and recognizing it for people. In my next video, I'm going to talk about the composite chart and how you can see soulmates through the composite chart. So I hope you'll stay tuned for that one um, next Sunday at 930. And if you want to know my personal and private story about my golden linkages and um, how they turned out, how my life was shaped, and then what I found out about those golden linkages, there's 
magic in that story. And I share that with my members. So come and be a soul navigation super supporter on your computer. It only works on your computer. Click the little join button and come and join me and get a bunch of freebies and perks. And you can go watch my video on everything that you get as a soul navigation super supporter. Please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I'm almost there. I hope you are wonderful. Tell me about your soulmate if you want to enter my contest just leave a little note in the comment share and like my video and tell me you want to be in it for a drawing for your deep dive natal report it's 60 pages long and it is so so good from my home to yours i hope you're wonderful until next sunday or on my membership channel i'll see you soon Mwah. take care